you use the uh, the Oscar Wilde Lady Bracknell quote at the beginning of. Uh, Isn't of the that book. a wonderful? It's delightful. Uh, Lady Bracknell, are your parents living? Jack, I have lost both my parents. Both. To lose one parent, Mr. Worthing, may be regarded as a misfortune. To lose both looks like carelessness. It's a great quote. And kind of a funny way to start a, a book about death and loss. Well, you know, it, it wasn't a book that I had planned to write. In fact, I had pretty much planned not to write it. I gave them both very good send-offs. Uh, Mom at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I organized it all and took, took you know, like a month of organization. And I gave her a great send-off, and then I pretty much organized Pups at, at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York, <laughs> which, which is sort of funny because uh, one, one memorial service was up Fifth Avenue and the other was just down Fifth Avenue. But these, you know, these are the two great temples of New York, and I, I gave them fabulous send-offs, and I, I sort of thought, well, maybe I'm, I'm done, and that's, we'll just leave it at that. But, um, you know, Craig, I'm a writer, for better or for worse, and um, this was pretty good material. I guess I, I sort of needed to needed to tell this story. Anyway, I just sat down and, and, and wrote it, and it kind of poured out. Uh, writing doesn't necessarily pour out of me. I mean, I do a lot of rewriting. And, uh, Unlike your father, who used to just sit down and he could Want you with his he, he he could he could he was pretty fast he, he wrote you know he wrote fifty five books he wrote six thousand columns he did which if and if you collected those six thousand columns into book form they would total something like forty five volumes so for a total output of a hundred volumes then he did fifteen hundred episodes of firing on thousands of other articles and he edited a magazine for 35 years. He was an extraordinary, I mean, he was a phenomenon, not, not, they, they don't come along every week, people like that. I'm so glad I got to meet your mom, even if it was just in this book. An equally fascinating character, and also, because, uh, you know, Canadians being what we are, we have to hold on to everybody who is slightly Canadian, your, and your mother was actually born. Here. She was not only uh, born in Canada, she went from being a, a Vancouver debutante, a sort of an orchid of Vancouver society, you know, junior league, you know, that, that kind of thing, to being the newlywed wife of a junior instructor in, in, in the, on the Spanish faculty at Yale. That's what my dad did while he was writing his first book, God and Man at Yale. And uh, so I imagine mom living in a small house in Hamden, Connecticut, um, with a cigarette dangling from her lip as she's uh, vacuuming the rug, which she had probably never done, nor had she ever cooked so much as a boiled egg. But she dutifully got on the train from New Haven into New York three times a week to take cooking lessons. Yeah, but not just from anybody. From a guy named James Beard. <laughs> That's how about that? Who went on to, you know, become James Beard. And she really, you know, she she really knew how to cook. I mean, she she set an incomparable table. So she was, you know, Canada should be very proud of Mom, because here she was, this, you know, what she used to say, with com with complete disingenuity. I'm just a simple girl from the backwoods of British Columbia. You know, so <laughs> that wasn't quite true. But there, but she was. She was. She liked to say it, you know. She uh, and uh, and she went on. You know, she ended up being, you know, a queen of of New York society. She was really quite something. Uh, you think um, he'd have been okay with you turning his life, your mother's life, into into a book? Because he was he was no he, he, would, he was he, pretty he, tough on you. He would have been appalled, actually. Yeah. But but as I say in the book, they're gone. You know, and when one the one upside of being an orphan is that it's your call now. Now this is a loving, and no one who gets to the end of this book would be able to dispute that this is a loving 
tribute. To this is two, not Mummy Dearest. To to two, the this least. is not, no, far from it. But they were complex people, and they were both. Uh, they could be absolutely impossible people, but that was sort of part of what made them uh, special. And so, it, you know, it has it, a memoir has to be honest. But uh, there was stuff I didn't. There was stuff I took out of the first draft. I mean, you know, I'm tempted to say, you don't know the half of it, <laughs> <laughs> but I won't say that. But it's a uh, no. I, I say they would have been appalled. I, I mean, who can say? I mean, the, the, there are people who are uh, mad at me because I've written this book. Uh, people on the right, politically, who are appalled. But to them I say, hey, you know, your icon, my dad. You know, I have every right to write this book. I feel a little bit about it the way I... Th I was an English major, and, uh, and this line came bubbling back to me from long ago, but it's something Melville wrote to Hawthorne after he had written Moby Dick. And no, I am not comparing myself to Melville, but it's such a delicious line. He said, he wrote to uh, Hawthorne, he said, I've written a wicked book and feel spotless as a lamb. <laughs> <laughs> the book is Losing Mum and Pup. I've been speaking with the author Christopher Buckley and Losing Mum and Pup, published by McClelland and Stewart.